right, good evening everybody. I'm Adam Cummings, the chairman of tonight's meeting, and I'll declare this more meeting in order, uh, to order, and declare it as a legally constituted meeting of the Town of Chi Lai's own Board of Appeals. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, tonight's agenda, if you do want a copy, it's back on the roller cart there. Introduce our board members. Jim Wiesner is on my left. Uh, Mark Mary is excused tonight. Fred Trotz on my immediate right. Philip Supernaut's on my far right. Side table, we have Paul Watson-Reed from the building department and Matthew Piston, our assistant town council. Sandy Hewlett is our stenographer. And we will hear the, uh, each application um, as they appear on the agenda, I will ask for one change, see if the board members are willing to entertain that after I say this finishing sentence. But at the conclusion of each public hearing, this board will discuss each application and vote on the application, and the applicant will receive a letter within a week of our decision. I do have to point out, in the event of an emergency, our exits are the exit that you likely entered. Exits in the back of the room go to the same hallway, and then the side, those go to the outside. And if you do have a cell phone, please silence that just to um, prevent any interruptions for tonight. Uh, first and foremost, board members, any issues with the signage? Um, the one change I was going to possibly entertain is moving number seven up. Uh, just because I, I'm expecting that one to probably have the most public input. I mean, we can, as a board, if we want to leave it as the way it is, we can. Or if we want to move that one to the beginning. Um, yeah. no, no preference? No, no, preference. Preference. no preference. Jim, any preference? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just leave it at the end then. Uh, but I do want um, to ask uh, side table, Council, uh, is it all right if I ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss something very quickly with the board? Yep. All right, so uh, audience will be right back in just a few minutes. We're just going to go to executive session to talk about a procedural matter. Thanks for the patience, everybody. All right. Uh, application number one, the application of Jack Hill, 77 Chestnut Drive, Rochester, New York, 14624, the applicant slash owner, for a land use variance to operate a gift shop, which is not a permitted use of the property located at 2675 Chile Avenue in the R-1-15 district. Uh, if you can please come to the podium with the mic, uh, say your name and address, and that goes for all the other applicants as your uh, um, application's called up. Anything else to add, sir? Okay, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Hill. I reside at 77 Chestnut Drive, Rochester, New York, 14624. Right. And um, this is your letter of intent that we received um, to the building department and uh, or a letter of intent from Teresa members. Um, I'll summarize it that Teresa's uh, looking to put the gift shop uh, at this address. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And previously, this one had a use variance for a beauty salon that went back to the 50s. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And some other uses. But, um, but the one that we're going to talk about that went back to 1985 uh, was specifically a beauty salon. And now you're looking for it to be a gift shop at this location. Correct. Okay, and then just skimming through, that's your application. Um, and once again, it did previously have a use variance here, but it was specific to a um, beauty salon or a, a barber shop. Uh, and you did, you did try to find other tenants. Is that what I'm reading here? Yes, sir. See, I purchased a place. I have a couple of rental properties. 
and I had some other intentions, but uh, I feel I was misled in a major league way right from the get-go, from the visit with the realtor to the closing. Um, you know, the building is built of um, commercial nature. There isn't even a bathtub or a shower. And In terms of a residential use, you're from saying? A, from a residential standpoint, there is a business uh, right next door to it. There's a um, an apartment complex directly across the street. There are several businesses in that vicinity, in that very near vicinity. I ended up having to get a commercial loan. I had to purchase commercial insurance. I mean, everything was handled on this like as if it was a commercial property for, you know, commercial use and that sort of thing. So I ended up uh, getting a realtor involved to try to get the place rented or leased as a salon or for anything because I did not realize at that time that that was a you know a restricted use there mm -hmm. so with all that said um, I ended up uh, getting an offer from Teresa and she had gone went ahead and signed a lease agreement and then she sent the letter of intent and you know, thinking that was her due diligence and what she, you know, was required to do from a, you know, business perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's when we found that uh, we had a, had, and it wasn't, had, a, had a problem here. Right. It wasn't permitted use for a gift shop. Yep. And so, so there's not going to be any requirements to do any kind of retrofits. You know, it's, it's going to be strictly for gift baskets and, you know, gift in nature, floral arrange, arrangements for weddings and funerals and, and that sort of thing. So it's going to be a pretty, um, you know, low key from the standpoint of an entrance and exit and, and that sort of thing. Okay. And, and this is an appraisal report you did have in your, it's up on the screen right now. Does that look familiar? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that where um, you also said that it was, uh, I think I read it in here. Um, something in here about it being used for commercial is that where you were first informed of it because because right down here under the property description it does show that its zoning is an r1 dash or r-1-1 dash dash residential single family sorry r-1-15 dash dash um, but it does say a property type of a single occupant commercial building with a current use as a salon is is that where the confusion came in I, I didn't really read that. You know, that was uh, appraisal was done for, you know, getting the loan approval. Okay. In 22? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I actually closed on it in October of, of 22. See, that was the other thing is the realtor had a signed lease agreement saying that those people were going to uh, lease from me for the next five years. Okay. In the salon, and you're saying? As a, as a salon, the existing, yeah. And... Then um, once the closing came and I went to go and introduce and, you know, because my original plan was to actually come in for a variance to build a garage back there to put a couple of vehicles in because I don't have enough room around my residence to build one. So I was going to, you know, go with that approach. And like I say, I had the, the real, oh, yeah, you got this. You'll have to apply for a variance, but this will work. This will. And next thing you know, there goes my renters and... And I've been trying, I ended up with a person that uh, signed a one-year lease, and that ended up going through because he ended up with a lot of um, financial setbacks. Okay. Which was a major financial setback for me as well. Um, and then you did provide a statement of income and expense. Just walk me through these numbers. So you did purchase it in October 2022. Um, you did borrow some money for that. It's got an estimated market value of 140,000, and you tried. Um, did you try to sell it again? No. Okay. That right there is filled out under the, you know, because I was not sure if, um, you know, what I was filling out here. So I ended up filling out as if I, I was actually, you know, going through the process of purchasing it. 
Yep. So and that's where misinterpretation on my part more than anything. Okay. So in this application, you've got comparables from both Chai Lai and some Greece and and Culver Road. I saw. But yeah. So the comparable. yeah the bottom line is is the the appraisal calls all that out for you know. Yep. The, you know for getting the approval for you know the the lending from the financial institution. Yeah. The, the reason I point that out is one of the criteria we have to do is an economic hardship question of whether you are uh, getting a return on your investment and um, well that was you know did not come out anything because I really lost in a major league way there I ended up with like um, five thousand dollars in um, income for the year of uh, 23 and the parking lot in this place was a disaster so I ended up putting sixteen thousand dollars into repaving the parking lot. Uh, the front window had a crack in it, so I, that was a thousand dollars to replace it. I just had it uh, sealed, which is another uh, fourteen hundred dollars. So I'm trying to keep it, you know, up in good condition and like that. And uh, so where where did the five thousand in income come from? I thought you didn't have any tenants. Well, this was that was the tenant. He I, I got five thousand dollars for him for the year. Oh, when gotcha. It was supposed to be fifteen hundred a month times twelve. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then on the other one, those are um, those aren't really into our consideration. That's that's your investment decisions. That right. Are part of that. Exactly. I point out that we're looking specifically to the use variance and well and that's uh, where uh, Teresa comes in because she was uh, fine with you know paying me 1750 a month mm -hmm. and signed a one-year lease in that amount uh, and just to be clear on it so there is currently a use variance that was approved back in 1985, and I didn't see a record that there was an expiration on that one. Um, so I would, but there are conditions on there. So specific to a beauty shop or a hair salon, the hours are limited to 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, uh, Thursday and Friday until 7 p.m., no Sunday hours. Um, maximum of five additional employees other than the owner. Um, a sign permit is needed for the existing sign and no on-street parking. Um, so that's what is conditionally approved right now um, from, that looks like August 27th, 1985. Um, I just point that out because that is what's permitted there. Here tonight we're talking about changing that um, to a gift shop. Uh, council, I have one question for that. If we change this to a gift shop, does that then supersede the previous hair salon so he can no longer have it as a hair salon, or does it expand it to allow either one of them? That's a good question. I appreciate that. So I don't see an expiration, so typically they go with the land, uh, but I don't know if use variances supersede each other when it comes to these type of... Give me one minute. Okay. Once again, compared to the other applications um, that we're hearing tonight, which are all area variances, you have a different set of criteria or decision making that we have to do. Um, the four criteria that we have, you have to meet all of them. You, the other ones, they may have one or two that they don't meet, um, but you have to pass all of them for what we're looking at here. And that's why a use variance is extremely difficult to obtain. Um, but board questions, Jim, any? I don't have any at this time. Fred? Um, I can't use that list, remember? I didn't realize that. Um, not at this time, I'm trying to phrase my words properly. Okay. Phil? So at the, at the time you purchased it, what did you know of any conditions um, for use? I did not know of any. I, I got the, um, I have a couple of um, copies from the original uh, sale of the place, you know, that had the information in the place when I looked at it to make the purchase. So when you bought it, it was being operated? And it, I, it, was, it was 
it was at, at that time there was an actual uh, business of a hair salon operating out of it. Okay, was there a lease involved? Did then it, when you went in, what had happened is I had a signed lease agreement that these people were going to continue uh, renting from me for the next five years okay. and operate that business. And then once the closing happened, the the person. Uh, one of the person's name that was on the lease agreement was allegedly terminally ill. Okay. So I didn't question it, you know. I mean, I just said, okay, it is what it is. Now I've got another obstacle here mm -hmm. to try to get it run it back out to another tenant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. So the current ten tenant you have has only signed a one-year lease. Yes, Correct. sir. She is. She has signed a one-year lease. So here's my question: Is in a year from now, she decides or business goes belly up. Now you're back to square one. Are we? Would you be better off doing something other with other with this piece of property, like either try to get the zone commercial? So I, um, I think what he, what the board member is alluding to is one other option or avenue you may want to pursue that isn't relevant to us tonight. We have no control over this. Is possibly going the same route that the dentist office next door went, is asking um, or in investigating the town board's action of rezoning this property, especially in light of subdivisions that may have happened next door and rezonings that may have happened next door. Uh, and across the street or down the street to see if there might be merit to that. I think what you're saying there is that would then expand his options of not being restrictive of just a beauty salon or just a gift shop, but it would be anything listed in whatever rezone he's going towards. If it's a residential business district zoning or if it's a general business district zoning, which I believe the dentist is a residential or a neighborhood business district which blends neighborhood district neighborhood business district with the residential business district to allow some more professional uses like dentist office or attorneys that makes all the sense in the world to me i i i think that's a very good idea but uh that would be regardless of what our decision is tonight is it's a deliberation you would have to make it has nothing to do with us tonight right yeah that's something i can pursue on a whole nother at another time yeah that buy enough time uh, <clears throat> no is an okay answer too no okay um, I can go ahead and open up the public hearing. Um, I'll open up the public hearing if anyone's here to talk about this application. All right, we're not getting much time on that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question on the Kathleen Miller? Um, it, it appears that Kathleen Miller has been in the property. On the right hand side, there is a single family residential home, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay, and then on the other side. So it seems to me that this is primarily a residential area. Whether it's the majority, the yes. The street or the building next door. I realize on the other side that there, you know, there is some uh, multifamily uh, things, but it just, it seems to me that. Yeah, this area is very unique because Previously, it was predominantly small, single-family residential, and then with the advent of Jetview Drive and, and Market uh, Market Street, or well, whatever, Market Drive, I'm not sure, whatever it is to get to the Wegmans Complex, um, there has been some spin-off businesses creeping up. Majority are professional offices that are converted homes, much like the hair salon would be. But yes, the, the majority of that area is um, the comprehensive plan um, speaks to some areas of Chile I have, but I'm not aware of this area specifically of what the future land uses are for this area other than the inventory of what the existing is. But yes, good observation. And that's why the zoning is R-1-15 on this property. 
And he is a and business he, owner that lives on that right hand side as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, anyone else? Not seeing any. Ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. We have a motion. Um, is there a second? Second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, before we get going, I did want to reiterate those conditions. I think they're reasonable. Um, I asked one more. Yep. Question. Go ahead. So what, what have you done to try to get another tenant for the use that you, that the property is actually, um, has the license for, for the beauty salon? Have you actually tried to get more tenants or? Yes. What I did is, um, on two different occasions, the, the, as soon as I, uh, purchased a place, I had it out on, uh, listed for a rental and the individual was going to, he wanted it to be a salon but he wanted to sell merchandise out of it so it was, you know he's going to refer to it as a salon slash boutique and then uh, once that fell through where he experienced uh, several hardships himself and uh, we, we decided to go our own ways and then I reached out to a second uh, real estate firm uh, through Howard Hanna, and they put this thing on a, I, I, could, I should, probably should have printed an email because I get emails every week on how many times it was actually viewed. And I mean, I'm getting things that it was viewed as much as a thousand times over a month period. You know, there was no appointments made to look at it, but um, there were a couple of appointments made where it was showed and there was some offers for it for significantly less. But um, this individual here, she's had this biz a, a type, this type of business in the past, and she's looking at uh, reigniting that. She lives just a, um, just a block down from that place. So it's going to be convenient for her. When I asked her how long she was going to be interested in uh, renting from me, she said forever, you know. Now I know that. No such thing as forever, and no, no such exactly, thing as a guarantee. But her intent is to be there for quite some time. So it's been empty time. for, what, a year now? And I, it's been um, unoccupied for over a year, yes, sir. That whole time period of a year you've been attempting to try to find somebody else? Well, the, keep in mind that I did have a guy that signed a one-year lease, so, you know, I, I dealt with his hardships of not being able to pay rent and that sort of thing. So... Um, once we parted ways, then yes, I had that listed a second time, and it, you know, and that uh, particular portal covers all real estate agencies. It's not just, you know, specific for Howard Hanna. Okay, I just was curious as if so. It yeah, at takes any a time, time where to there was a question here. mark of, hey, I got to get something. It was. It wasn't just me going to a, you know. Um, you know, some of the local sites, I, I went through an actual realtor. In fact, it cost me a dollars But I do need to interject. Sure. This is all anecdotal, and sadly, it wasn't included in your application here. So we can take the anecdotes on it, but um, I can't really say as it's proof for us tonight. It's it's written documentation is what we're really looking for here. Yeah, and, and one I know. I, I was. Those, did you pass along that there were hours of operation conditions or or limitations? Um, already imposed I'm guessing probably not no no I'd never again I had no idea this stuff again I, I kind of got into this I, I, I was misled and um, you know I did I got you know yeah this is more personal to me you know I guess is yeah I got myself into a yeah. so, you know a business move that so just the other part to point out as it's documented here so your lot size is 0.18 acres uh, which is actually below the square footage requirement. So just to point out another hardship that you have here is even if this entire building was raised, um, meaning demolished and removed, you can't build on this lot because it's a substandard lot. It's smaller than the zoning district permits. Okay. So you're a pre-existing non-conforming and have those restraints as well. Um, same with your building area square footage at 780 square feet plus or minus. That's substandard for a residential building as well for a single family. So I just want to point that out to everybody to, to just remember that we're in a unique property here, even compared to the other properties in this area. Um, 
some of the other ones that were non-conforming in terms of lot size. Two of them, I believe maybe even three, uh, were subdivided into or merged into a larger parcel to make them compliant. He doesn't have that avenue here. So I just want to point out some of these factors that he definitely has a unique um, obstacle is a good set of obstacles is a good terminology for this and why we're hearing it tonight as the unique case that it is. Um, or in that, I don't want to hold up the meeting too much. Matt, are you comfortable? We yeah, so it, it, it's uh, essentially in your discretion. Okay. And uh, if that, it, you can impose reasonable conditions and you have the power to modify prior decisions. So it's really, it, it's whether or not that's something that you guys want to do. Okay. So, so what I'd say to guide this board um, as chairman is, is say that um, while those conditions are reasonable for a beauty salon, um, I think it would be reasonable uh, to say that those would still stay for a beauty shop or a hair salon or a barber shop, whatever terminology you want to have. I don't know what other words they can describe them as. But in terms of the gift shop or a flower shop, floral, uh, florist shop, um, those obviously may not need the same ones as these. Um, so we would come up with those specific to the gift shop uh, slash florist shop slash florist shop. Would that be fair enough to say gift shop is a generic enough term to say a florist would fall under a gift shop? I don't know how our definitions are that specific, uh, or if our definitions are that specific. I don't believe they are. Um, we have listings of types of businesses that go, go in, but not a definition of a gift shop. Um, but I would say the hours, um, for instance, on this one, you may not want to limit it to Sunday to no Sunday hours because people might want to buy them on, say, well. I may or may not, I'm incriminating myself if my wife watches, as I might buy flowers on Mother's Day for, from my kids on the same day as Mother's Day. Um, but I would say that having hours of operation, cognizant of residential be areas being next door, so being limited to, say, 9 to 7 p.m. would be reasonable. Um, and then same with no more than five additional uh, um, employees other than the owner because of the number of parking spaces that have traditionally been on this site. And we haven't received any complaints from any neighboring properties. And definitely no on-street parking because it is a state road um, that is fairly well-traveled. Um, and any signage that you'd need would have to come in compliance or require variances as needed for what came in. Yeah, I see there was one that was uh, denied there towards yep. the end, but that does have a, um, a a framing and bracket on the actual structure, so that that sign will be there and not nothing down on the road or yep. that sort of thing. To explain what was denied is we don't allow A-frame sandwich board signs anywhere in town, except for when we have so. board of assessment reviews, we put them up here to tell yeah, people Yeah, I put one up way. there and I was uh, standing at, you know, from the time that was erected, I think it was uh, gusty winds there, right? <laughs> yep. And that's why we don't allow A-frames, especially sure. on Chile Ave, is they, they are prone to being blown over and into traffic and becoming safety hazards. Um, the board in agreement with those for a gift shop, if, if the board was so inclined to grant it can you um and adam yes the, the, the town that the code doesn't define floral or florists floral shops so or gift shop or gift shop so right. I, I, so it, i'd say they'd be synonymous it's correct. in essence a a shop that sells gifts so just looking at this board actions yep it doesn't show a sign permit no they were denied one they were denied one. It's saying here that um, back in 1985, they needed to make an application for a sign permit for the existing sign. I don't know if they ever did that back then. It was a condition of their approval, and I don't know if they did it. What I'm saying is we've got current sign code regulations that may not be the same as then. 
so whatever sign you're planning on doing work with the building department they would tell you if it was allowed by code or if you would have to come back in for a variance okay and once again these are all speculation if we approve a use variance sure which we have not decided yet Is that clear all right so I'd like to move on go ahead Fred. Can we put it as a condition that he goes to the town board to get a? No. Okay. Nope. We cannot make a condition then to ask somebody to rezone the property. We gave him very helpful advice to them, which we didn't have to do. Correct. In my opinion. Greatly appreciated. All right. Uh, so condition of approval is going to be ours limited to 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we'll say Monday through Sunday, or if you want to say Sunday through Saturday, uh, but I'll say Monday through Sunday. Uh, number two is maximum of five additional employees other than the owner. Um, no on-street parking. And I would make this subject to a period of, um, I think one year is too short, um, but I'd say three years would be reasonable, meaning he's got this. Because we can, we can issue an expiration date, correct? Subject to him coming back for renewal. Uh, yes, you can, subject, you can condition it on a, a specific time frame. Thank you. And this would be this would expire after three years from issuance. What that means is, if this gets approved and it goes through, then after the third year, make sure to come in here and, and get it renewed. If it doesn't get renewed, then it's expired and no longer valid. Which is why the 1985 one is fortunate for you for a beauty salon because it never expired. Okay. Now, when you say, um, you know, prior to that expiration date, I just come back over and, 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 and get another permit or... No, or it would be another use ...another variance. application, and then that would be for another use variance? Yep. Okay. It would be for the same use variance that if just we have for the same tonight. use. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so right. that's specific to the gift shop as we're hearing tonight. Now, know. that also gives you a three-year period to go through other avenues. Yes. Meaning if... You found a different use that this was more attractive to, then you would come in for a use variance for, I'm not even going to say Whatever, what the yeah, speculation yeah. would be. All right. All right. So with that said, uh, I would declare the zoning board as lead agency and based on the information evidence present this hearing, find this application to be an unlisted action of no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. A second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? I'd ask for a motion uh, to adopt this application with those four conditions of approval. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll go on to a board vote. Jim. Yes. Um, Mark's absent. Fred. No. Phil. Yes. And I vote no. So this one, due to an absence here, we did have a quorum, but it was a two-to-two -two vote by one absence being here. He counts as a no vote. Um, so you did not get approved for the use variance today, um, but I would recommend uh, taking some advice that was granted tonight. Uh, and I will say the reason for that is you have very hard criteria to meet. Um, the four criteria is realize a reasonable return on your investment. You did prove that you're working hard at that. Um, and then the hardship being self-created, that one is tough to, to point it on to the realtors and everybody else. That one's a tough one to, to push out on. Um, but I wish you luck on it and, um, and especially to see a business back out there. Now, to be clear, that was for a gift shop specific. If you did find somebody with a beauty salon, they can certainly occupy that space. All right. Bye. I couldn't uh, talk somebody just just uh, reconsider one last time before I leave because this has been so 
I, I mean, I know this is my problem, but I just, you know, I, I think the way I was misled by these realtors and, I, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I mean, there's a, a there, there's a Monroe County portal that calls it out as small retail and non-residential. I mean, it is, you've got a very tough spot to go there and I, I am sympathetic to that part, but um, the answer for tonight is no. And, and, and your reasoning on the, on the no votes? I just gave it. Um, was just the... Um, you didn't prove the self-created hardship. We have to meet all the criteria. Um, it's definitely self-created. Um, I know you had some other guidance that was in there. Um, I will say that changing the essential character of the neighborhood, you passed that one because it's been a, quote, retail shop in the past. Um, your reasonable return on investment, you passed that one. You've showed that you need it. So, but you have to pass all of them and you didn't pass them all tonight. So I wish you luck on it. And, and um, if you ever need to talk to the building department or myself uh, as the ZBA chair for any other questions, feel free to. Um, once again, you can come in for a different use variance, um, just not the gift shop. And, and we can guide you to what information might help that case. Because even if, you know, you know, no matter what the situation is now, you know, I'm either at the helm of trying to get it out as a, a salon. Yep. And the gift shop, I mean, there's, there's no alterations needed to be done or special installations or anything like that. And Other than it's not permitted and, and you've got a difficult property there. Even to get it residential, you've got some obstacles to overcome. Yeah, that, oh. you know, so you wouldn't, uh, okay, all right. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. He still can go to the. You town still can board. go to the town board. Yes. What you, is that now? You can still go to the town board for the rezoning application. And get it rezoned, so then you could have. So I'd recommend researching on and talk to Paul if you'd like to what the allowable uses of the possible zoning districts that I mentioned tonight, which is the residential business, and the neighborhood business districts and see if you've got that avenue there and some possible uses on that. Okay. So. All right. Look what kind of time does that take? Is, is, is that, is uh, that's, that? I couldn't answer that okay, one. Okay, good enough. Well, thanks again, everybody. You're welcome. All right, application number two is the application of Danielle C. Smith, 69 Daunton Drive, Rochester, New York, 14624, the applicant owner for a variance to erect a fence six foot, zero inches in height, where four foot, zero inches is permitted in the front setback along Knight's Trail at the property located at 69 Daunton Drive in the R-1-15 district. So just to show that real quick to everybody and find my page number. On page. Anything else to add on your application? No, nothing to add. All right. I like <laughs> brief. We, we set, set a high bar for the first one. So this is looking at a front, front yard fence um, where you're looking to have six feet. Now, remember in the backyard, you're allowed six feet, but you're on a corner lot, which is what makes it unique because you don't really have a backyard. You've got Correct. two sides. So your dark black line as I'm pointing it up here it goes along the boundary on the north side why does it make this little jog in the northeast corner there is a very large tree there that's what I was looking to have clarified <laughs> I thought so when I drove by and then it goes along the eastern boundary and then you've got it a little bit off from there um, Jim any questions So how far off the road is this fence going to be? I think it was in the application is five feet. No, I think further than that. It has to be back behind the mailbox. I believe that's nine feet. Okay. Yeah. But we're here because the front plane of the house, you're looking to have that. So you're allowed to have four feet on this bump Correct. out it's just, here. Yep. Um, so what they're only, they're allowed from the house to the house that would be the amount that they would be allowed right by along that side lot line yep and she's looking to bump it towards the front and now they're looking for like an off. extra 30 feet or so then 
Well, she's allowed a fence there. She just wants the six feet. Correct. Uh, she wants it to be a taller fence. Okay, that's all I got. Fred? Why do you feel you need to have the six foot fence? Trying to create privacy. So we have a private space for our home. And four feet wouldn't cover it? I can see over a four foot fence. So people, there's a lot of foot traffic on that road and they'd be able to see over it too. But once again, you could move the fence back along with the house and have it be six feet. That would really narrow down our backyard. Can we specify how far in as part of the condition? No, we're just here for height tonight. Okay. But we can't put a condition on it. No. No. If we can condition it to be five feet in height instead of six feet. But not where they put it. Right. And once again, if she pushes it, if we deny the front height, she can always put it further back and narrow that backyard and have it be six feet tall. Correct. If we deny it. How long have you owned the house? Oh, I've been there about 13 years. And you need the, and you're requesting the fence now because I mean. I spend a lot of time outside. I work from home, so I'm there all of the time. So I'm just really trying to create a private environment for myself and my family. Have you looked at any other ways of doing that with like maybe shrubs? I could. varieties or something like that? I could, but I believe I would still need the variance. Correct. That Even the vegetative fence still counts oh, as a really? fence. Yep. yep. Oh, okay. I apologize. We, we made some people in the past cut their 10-foot tall arborvitae <laughs> down to 6 feet. Yes. Anyway. They couldn't do it all at but one I time. I think it, it, could, it could be 6. Right. It can be 6. Oh, but we granted that variance. So she's oh, asking. Okay. And, and those ones weren't in the front yard. They were side. Um, so once again, um, it is unique because you are um, in the um, in the corner lot mm -hmm. by having Daunton and, and Knight's Trail sit there. Correct. I don't have any other questions. All right. Actually, I, I would go back to Jim's question. Paul, on your denial where it says corner lot, no fencing located in yards adjacent to street, that you're talking about four foot zero inches permitted in terms of height, correct? I know it's, I can bring up the code and say it, I'm fairly certain it's height on the 500-54A3, um, but I just want to make sure that that's not a linear dimension horizontally. It is height. There are no linear dimensions. In terms of horizontal. Just vertical. Distances. Right. From For setbacks. Setback but fences aren't subject to the setbacks. Oh, sure. And and what is unique about our code is you've got the one fifty four A dash one um, talks about the height for all properties and then we have specific four corner lots like this. Which is why we're really only talking about the southern portion today. Fred, anything else? No. Bill? No questions. <clears throat> Side table, anything to add? No. All right, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for this application. We have a set of hands. Yes, sir. Hi, Kirk. Uh, co owner of the Mount Whitney Carry, uh, resident of the Mount Whitney Trail. Um, this uh, tends to be very out of character with other properties in the neighborhood. Uh, and when I speak of the neighborhood, I'm speaking specifically of those properties in what's known as the Robin Hood Acre Track. Uh, uh, no one else has a uh, six foot fence in a uh, front yard as this would be. Uh, some do have, you know, backyard six foot fences. Um, also, it um, would inhibit uh, the view of the corner because this, these properties located in the beach of Central School District, only elementary school kids are picked up right in the driveway. I need the middle school kids and high school kids uh, catch the bus at the corner of Don and Nice Trail. And so that extra height would prevent whether it be ourselves or whoever purchases the property in the future and 
being a four bedroom house, it's likely that the future owners would be uh, have family, have children uh, going to school, would inhibit them to be able to make sure that their kids are safely on the bus. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing any other hands. Ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. No motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, I don't have anything else to add. We covered those two that were on there. Um, board, any other questions? I don't have any other um, conditions on this one because it's just a fence. Um, going back to your original question, Jim, I would um, ask the applicant once again to explain along your southern, where your garage ends at your driveway, mm -hmm. uh, by code, you could run that fence all the way down and be six feet tall. Okay. Just make sure your understanding of that. I am. Thank you. Um, and then you've got it proposed coming out towards the road and being four feet from this right-of-way line, correct? Nine feet. Or nine feet, sorry. Um, so you've got nine feet going here, and then your distance going, that is how far. I'm seeing 27 feet, so that'd be around 18, 19 feet because your driveway is 27? Yes. Yes. So that's, that's really what you're looking for there is to have that jog come out there. Um, and then you do have a neighbor to the east, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, but a six-foot fence is still allowed on that property line. So along with the lines of his original question is we can, um, we're, our goal is to minimize variances. So we're talking about heights tonight. Um, so by code, you're allowed to go here. Uh, I would say that it's reasonable to allow you, if you'd like to, um, move it further to the north. Um, I do agree with the concerns that were voiced because uh, I also have uh, experienced those with corner lots or sorry, being the property next to a corner lot that put in a six foot fence, which tried to, they, they only went with a four foot because my driveway was the one blocked from people coming in and uh, children riding across the driveway, not seeing the oncoming cars. Um, to minimize that, would you be willing to move that or entertain moving it further over or do you wanna stay with your application as you have it? I would be willing to come in further. Okay. So say instead of 18 feet going to say move it 10 feet there so that would make it from the road uh, that would be 19 feet from the road. The OCD in me really wants to say 20 because it's <laughs> such a more round number but. You could go 18 instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would leave that to Jim. Would you be in agreement with splitting the difference and cutting that in half? or no so let me make sure I understand what you just told her so you so by code she could have a four six, foot the four uh, six foot fence yep. just to the south end of the house or the garage the, where the garage is so the garage extending all the way to the east to that far line that can all be six feet in height okay she is looking to have this one bumped out but she wants it 18 feet this way and then the distance from that jog down I did to check too the the bus stops at the opposite quarter mm -hmm. so they don't stop at my stop sign they stop at the one mm -hmm. across the street um, and I did check to see from the road if it would create any kind of problem with viewing mm -hmm. the intersection of the stop sign and it does not because we do have a lot of children in the area and I do want to be respectful of that mm -hmm. so is that what you were looking so, for Jim? Uh, to, to, so 20 so she Right now, by code, she can have it at the 27.7 feet, which is the length of the drive. Yes. I don't Heading think east. Yeah, from the south. Yep. Because once again, this is a weird plan. East is to the north, or er, east, east is, is to the arrow. down, the arrow's to north, the right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so on this plan, north is to the right, east is down. So... <laughs> So I'm saying this for <clears throat> Sandy's benefit because she doesn't get the map to put it in the minutes. So we're basically talking along Knight's Trail, right? Yes. Okay. Just so everybody can 
So if I were to look at this up here, yep. Legally, they can have it from this point down. Yep. At six feet. Correct. Which doesn't sound too bad to me. I just would don't like it on top of the road, but. And that's when. So right now, she has. Um, modified her application to be 18 feet from that right of line uh, right of way line boundary instead of nine feet <coughs> so cutting that just from my cursor going from there to there is that accurate uh, sure <laughs> <laughs> so that's as what, accurate as you can be on a projector <laughs> right i okay i now that i understand a little better i I don't know that I would go with that, but okay. So, I mean, right well, now, for the sake of sight, even for them to be able to see, be in the driveway and look um, to the east, that would give them a better view. But okay, I just say leave the application the way it is. Okay, we're going to leave it the way it is, and specifically, we're looking at six foot height versus four foot. All right. Any other questions? Hearing any, I'll declare the zoning board lead agency and based on the information and evidence at this hearing, find this application to be a type two action and have no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, and I'd like to ask for a motion to adopt this application as it was originally applied for. <laughs> motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, board vote. Jim? No. Fred? No. Bill? No. I also vote no. So that one was denied in terms of that, but you are more than welcome to put Works it six for feet for us. <laughs> Enjoy the privacy. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, application number three. Uh, the application of Robert Uthman. If I pronounced that wrong, please correct me. Uh, or Uthman. 22 Terrytown Drive, Rochester, New York, 14624 owner, uh, applicant for variance to A, install an egress window with a seven foot zero inch side setback with 10 feet zero inches is required and B, amend a variance for a structure to be 5.0 feet north of the property line or six feet uh, zero inches was granted in 1968 at the property located at 22 Terrytown Drive in the R-1-12 district. Anything to add, sir? Nothing to add, and yes, I'm Robert Uthman, 22 Terrytown Drive. All right. Just gonna go to the map real quick here. And as it shows here, this is where the egress window is gonna go. Correct. And the other one, um, the second part is on the north side where the garage is. This survey map, the instrument survey, I don't know when this was done. I believe this was included in the uh, closing documents when I bought the house in yep. like eight. 1988 or 89. Yep. Um, it shows a setback of 5.07 and 5.10 for where the garage is. And the building department brought to my attention when I submitted the application for the, uh, the escape window, yep. egress window, um, that the prior approval was for six feet. Yep. So they suggested that I clean went, it up. Yeah, just clean that up. So I included that on this application. Yep. So that's going back to that garage was part of the, was it built in 1968 or was it? That's true. Who knows? I mean, I bought the property in 88 or 89. That seems reasonable that that's about when it was built. Okay. Um, and, at, and once again, uh, for us considering that tonight, that 5.07 would also make the 5.18 feet compliant too. Not to say compliant, but it would be encompassed by that one too on the 
western side of it that's uh, also below six feet. And I don't want to speculate on it, but I'm sure it could be just the overhang that was, they did the inside wall and now we do the outside wall. Who knows what it was, but. Um, Before my time. Yep. As an owner, and so and I don't this know. has a surveyor's um, certification on there. So uh, I feel confident with that number that we don't have to worry about that. So Jim, any questions? Why don't have some of the blank pages in here? So that is due to, stuff. no, this was a, these were all printed single-sided, and when they scanned it, they scanned it double-sided, so it took the blank pages with extra it. Extra blanks in there. I have, we've no, I have we've no got blanks. a couple of applications that have a couple of extra blanks. There are some scribbly marks on them. Yeah, that's from the light on the scanner. So, for instance, here, that's coming through from a different one. Okay. I have no questions. See, so questions. it's right here, Jim, to show you. See where it says in ink the location of proposed window wall and egress? Oh, okay. That's where it bleeds on to the back. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see it. All right. Uh, so we've got two of them on here, but any questions on the A one for the egress window? Sounds like no, Jim. I'm sorry, what did you say? Any questions on no, A, no the questions. egress window? How about B for the, the 1968? No questions okay. on that one. Fred, on letter A for the egress window? No. Um, anything for letter B? No. All right. Phil, anything on A? No. Anything on B? No. Side table, anything to add? Uh, I will go ahead and make a motion to open the public hearing. All right. Not seeing any hands. Ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. We have a motion. Uh, is there a second? We have a second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? Um, Paul, it's not often we get egress windows. He needs a permit for that one, correct? Yes. All right, so one condition of approval is going to be for a building permit from the building department for that egress window. The garage predates me, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Um, so for application 3A, uh, actually I'll do both of them for secret purposes and declare the zoning board as lead agency and based on the information and evidence presented this hearing, find this application to be a type two action of no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, this is specific to 3A. I'd ask for a motion to adopt this application with the one uh, condition of approval that he gets a building permit. So move. All right. Yeah. Second. Second. Board vote. Jim? Yes. Fred? Yes. Phil? Yes. I also vote yes, so you're all set on that one. Now 3B for the 5.0 feet for the north setbacks. Um, ask for a motion to adopt that application. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Board vote. Jim? Yes. Fred? Yes. Phil? Yes. I also vote yes. So you're all set on both of those, sir. Thank you. As far as the building continue permit. to work with um, Paul, so what had happened with yours is you submitted I the submitted. building permit. He yep. denied it, yep. that application. Go back to them even after the verbal tonight, but you'll have decision sheets from us by tomorrow morning. I'll have it to them. So you are good to go to work with them to continue on with that permit and any inspections that they need. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, application number four, application of Rich Lipke, Turf Masters LLC, 18 Charter Circle, Rochester, New York, 14606, Philomena Lipke, 18 Charter Circle, Rochester, New York, 14606, owner for a variance to allow a 53.0 feet setback, where 160 feet is required for an existing cell tower at the property located at 69 Golden Road in the R-1-20 slash LI district. Um, can I be excused? And I was just going to say, so Fred, I'm going to ask you to recuse yourself for this one because you're the next door neighbor. All right, let me just do this one. All right. Anything else to add, sir? Yeah, a couple of things. Thank you, Matt Tomlinson from Marathon Engineering. Uh, we're appearing on behalf of the applicants, the Lipkeys, who are with me here tonight as well. Uh, I'm sure this board's aware, but we did appear before the planning board a couple weeks ago to uh, request subdivision approval, which we were granted conditioned on 
obtaining our variance uh, from this board. Uh, Lipke's purchased the property a couple years ago, and it came with uh, an encumbrance on it being a cell tower and a lease. Uh, the land was uh, that the cell tower is on was not a separate parcel of land. There's a lease parcel defined, but not a separate uh, legal parcel, if you will, or tax parcel that I'm aware of. And so uh, they would like to keep the west side, excuse me, the east side of the road, which I know there's a typo in my letter. There is no house on that side. Um, the east side of the road for future development for family home of their own and list the west portion for sale. Uh, one of the things that was requested uh, in initial discussion with town staff was to create a legal lot as much as possible relative to the cell tower so it could be assigned a separate tax count number, make it legalized. However, uh, and I believe the tower predates the uh, zoning for uh, telecommunications that's in within the town code, I think it was built roughly in 2002, it was built only 53 feet off that north property line. Unfortunately, the north property line is the only property line that we cannot control when we create the proposed lot. So uh, the flag lot portion, the setbacks to southeast and west are all compliant with code as it relates to the current regulations, uh, but we do need to obtain a variance for an existing non-conforming situation. I believe we've provided uh, justification for all of those uh, with many of the answers being, hey, it's there now, we're not changing anything. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. I do know that um, with only three, we do need three yes votes. So I would ask on the record if for whatever reason there's a question that we can't answer, we would ask to be tabled versus a vote being taken. Uh, because there is no substantial change that we can make as it relates to the setback from the north property line, which again, we do not control. Um, that would be uh, a hardship to our clients in trying to make that happen. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that, that the board members may have. Jim, any questions? So as you said, I mean, nothing's changed other than you've created a subdivision in that area. That's right? correct. There's no proposed improvements at all. The 53 feet is off of somebody else's property that has nothing to do with this. And, and I neglected to mention, uh, when the Lipkes purchased the property, the seller retained the lease. So while they own the land underneath it, they do not have control over the lease or any of the, it was accepted out of the sale. Uh, and therefore, they have no control over the terms of that or any conditions as it relates to the tower itself either. Okay. So does that, that parcel will go to... It'll still be owned still or retained as a real estate parcel by the Lipkeys. It just allows them to sell okay. uh, what's, I believe, lot two. I'm sorry, I forget which one I numbered it. Uh, unencumbered to another person who may want to do it and not have to deal with uh, with the hassle of a cell tower on a parcel of land. I believe that'd be lot three. Lot, lot two looks to be the one. Lot, yep, so they'd be able to sell lot two without being encumbered, right. it being encumbered by the cell right. tower. Lot three would be the one that has this carved out of it, correct? Correct. That's all. All right. But the, but the tower is in compliance in relation to that lot. Except for the north property line, yes. which is our not a, a lot line that we can adjust as part of this right. application. Right. But everything else is. That's correct. So from that cell tower, you've got 163 uh, feet shown to the west, mm -hmm. 161 to the south. Mm -hmm. How about from the cell tower to the east? That's 161 as well. But Perfect. yeah, that's yep. I know technically your front line could be over here and you meet that quite a bit so yep. you've got three out of the four it's just that one prevailing Correct. wind is coming from the west and that 160 feet is most likely for fall distance correct yeah it exceeds the height of the tower by 25 yep. feet as required by code we did uh, subsequent to our submission here uh, take a look at whether or not there are any structures within that distance on the north property line and it, it appears that there's a shed or outbuilding that's approximately 190 feet to the northeast, and then the houses are over 250 feet, or the other structures okay. over 250 feet away. All right. Jim, any other questions? No. Phil, any questions? No, no other Side questions. Table, anything to add? I'll go ahead and open and up. Uh, make a motion to open the public hearing for this application. Not seeing any hands, ask for a motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, saying aye. Aye. 
opposed. Um, I don't really have anything else. It's a utility tower that's been used for 22 years. Um, and obviously, if that tower was ever, you're already 25 feet above it right now, if that tower was ever expanded up, that would change uh, fall distances and things yeah, like that. Be required to either come back to this board or right. take another path for approvals, yep. Right. All right. Uh, Is this a condition on the, from the planning board right now? Or? Um, yes. I think so. I never saw their decisions, but I'm yes. guessing it was. Yeah. All right, uh, I will declare the zoning board as lead agency and based on the information and evidence presented at this hearing, find this application to be an unlisted action of no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, I'd ask for a motion to adopt this application. So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right, board vote. Yes. Jim? Uh, Phil? Yes. I also vote yes, so you're all set on that Great, one, Matt. Thank you very much. All right. Fred, you can come on back. I don't want to. <laughs> all right. You're recused for the rest of them. You just have to stay here. Um, we're beyond application number five, the application of Lee Zimmerman, 60 South Lake Road, Virginia, 14416, for Ryan and Laura Farrell. Uh, six Guymar Circle, Rochester, New York, 14624, owners for variance to erect a covered open porch with a proposed 55 foot zero inch front setback where 60 feet zero inches is required at the property located at Six Guymar Circle in the R-1-15 district. Good evening, I am Ryan Farrell, owner of the Six Guymar uh, Circle, Rochester, New York, with my wife, Laura. We did not attend this evening. Right. So you're looking for a front yard setback reduction of five feet for the porch. Right. All right. Jim, any questions? So you said you were the contractor or the homeowner? I am the homeowner. Contractor told me this morning he was not going to make I it due to a commitment. I have no questions. Yep, I owe, I owe my wife, Laura. All right. Fred, anything? No. Phil? No. All right, once again, just to explain it, we're jumping it out that way. So the 61 feet is from the front of your house. Uh, and that's what's unique about this, is the arrow is being shown that it's 61 feet to the front of this structure here. Is that 61 feet actually to your house, or is it to this? The, the concrete, new concrete pour. Okay. So, so that would, that's the clarifying question I have is from this to your house, does that mean it is 67 feet? Okay. Yeah, I would assume so, yes. Lee had to answer that question. I believe that is how he measured it, though. The, what you're seeing there is to the front of the deck that we are propose, proposing, I would say. The reason I ask is because then I don't get why we're asking for 55 feet when we should just be asking for 61 feet, which doesn't need it. It's 61 it to his proposed one, deck. It is 61.1 to the original house foundation. Okay. That's okay. Add, Apologize. Six feet from that and, and you get the 55. 5.1. Okay. You drop the one. Just oh, I see it. There's a hidden. I see it here. There's an arrow here from the surveyor that shows here to here. With that arrow. <clears throat> I apologize. This, Miscommunication this from Lee apparently to me. That's what it was. All right. That clears up my confusion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Paul. I didn't hear any other questions from No, no questions. All right. Side but, table, anything else to add other than correcting? No, All right, thank you. Uh, I will go ahead and open up the public hearing for this application. Not seeing any hands, ask for a motion to close this public hearing. Motion. A motion, is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, one condition of approval is you'll have to get a building permit. So you've already started that process. Just finish it after you already had that denial. If we approve it tonight. Um, and I will go ahead and declare the zoning board as lead agency and based on the information and evidence at this hearing, find this application to be a type two, a type two action with no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. 
A second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ask for a motion to adopt this application with that one condition of approval. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Board vote. Jim? Yes. Fred? Yes. Bill? Yes. I also vote yes. You're all set on that, sir. Thanks for filling in for Lee. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Tell him he needs to credit your account. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Mm. All right, application number six, the application of Sammy E. Hanna, 119 King Road, Churchville, New York, 14428. Applicant slash owner for variance to erect an ADA structure with a proposed 50.50 feet front setback where 75 feet zero inches is required at the property located at 119 King Road in the R-1-15 district. Evening. Let me just get your application up real quick. All right, anything else to add? Uh, actually, I'm just, my name is Paul St. Dennis. I'm uh, Sam and Pam's son-in-law. Okay. Here. Visiting family in Alaska. Hmm. It's cold there. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed home, my wife is there. Um, basically, my sister-in-law um, has a ramp right now in front of the house. It comes out. I don't know, probably from the, from the house, probably 20 feet or so, even farther. Um, and so we or just want to, we to, want to totally remove that structure and put on um, a, a front porch that will have an elevator that will be covered. And that only come out six feet. The roof is only going to come out seven feet. So I'm not sure why on here it says 40 feet. Um, I haven't actually seen the plans myself. It's only coming out. A total of seven feet off the front of the house. I'm seeing that they've got it 5.6 feet here and 4.0 feet here, so that would be uh, a total of 9.6 feet coming. It's probably out there. for the steps. I'm assuming on the front there. Yep, it is. It's measuring okay. out to the steps. Yep. Yep. So that's what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, Jim. Any questions? So this will actually be less. Less of a setback, less imposing than what's already there, from what I see. Oh yeah, it's going right. to be so much nicer. Right now, it's like in half of your front yard, so now it'll be almost like a porch on the front yard. It'll be a porch on the front yard, yeah. That's all I got. I have nothing. Bill, no questions. Side table, anything to add? I'll ask a uh, uh, motion to open the public hearing for this application. Not seeing any hands. Ask for a motion to close this public hearing. Motion. Or second. Second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, I will declare the zoning board as lead agency and based on the information and evidence to present this hearing. Find this application to be a type two action with no significant environmental impact. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, one condition of approval which I should have said earlier, but it goes without saying, is need, they'll need to obtain a building permit. They've already started it. They yep. got denied and came here. Yep. Um, so just have them complete that process, and that will be one condition that they must approve, uh, obtain a building permit if this was approved. And now I'd ask for a motion to adopt this application with that one condition. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Board vote. Jim? Yes. Brett? Yes. Bill? Yes. I also vote yes, so that's approved. All set. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for coming in and filling in. Mm -hmm. All right, application number seven, application of Gizzy Real Estate Holdings, LLC, 3850 Buffalo Road, Ross Street, 14624, applicant slash owner for a variance to existing conditions based on new zoning district and proposed use. A, set back to interior lot line to be 30.667 feet. Existing where 40.0 feet is required, and B lot width to be 149.0 feet where 150.0 feet is required at the property located at lot 14415 Buffalo Road in the RM district. Chris, did you want that or did you want the roller cart? Whichever is easiest for you. All right. Can you can you shift it back that way just so the public and us as best we can can see it? I think that's good. Uh, good evening. My name is Chris Schultz. I'm presenting uh, the applicant on this. I have offices at 129 South Union Street in Spenceport, New York. 
Um, this is a uh, redevelopment of a site. Um, if you recall, um, the existing building on the site was a two-story professional office building. And um, based on the demands of the tenants, um, basically wanting one story, uh, not dealing with two-story, the building unfortunately lost all its tenants. And it got to a point where it was a, a vacant building um, and they needed to figure out what they could do. Um, so, you know, this was, this was uh, planned out to involve both the existing parcel and the parcel to the west. Um, just to give you a little background on how we got to this point, um, parcel to the west was originally zoned uh, R1 residential. Um, in this parcel, both these pieces were commercial. And then the idea was we created this property line, leaving 100 foot, which is the minimum requirement for commercial lots. And there's a one story uh, professional office building proposed on lot two. Uh, townhouses were being proposed in here, and we subsequently uh, went through the, and this portion of the property was rezoned to a residence to allow both the conversion of this building uh, to apartments and allow the townhouse to come in. Uh, we later also, um, after rezoning, obtained a, an approval from the planning board to subdivide and remove this line. So this would be one of the whole parcel. Uh, the recording filing of that subdivision map was held based on the need to uh, do the demolition and do the remodeling on this board. Basically, this kept it a, a separate site. Uh, all the parking and access remained the same. The addition uh, put on the south side of the building for access and storage um, as part of the, code, the meat code for the permits. Uh, this kept it um, easier for them to take care of the first phase, which is always going to be uh, the renovation of the building. So can you point out where is the 149 feet and where's the 30.8 feet? Because I don't want to confuse it tonight. That's all we're worrying about tonight. Yeah, so 149 is this one right here. Yep. Or maybe 150. Yep. Of course, we, we had 249 originally. Yep. They got 100, but that's 149. And the reason you have to have 149 is because you have to have 100 for that commercial lot. Yep. So meaning if you didn't have that, you would be in for a variance for that commercial lot being less than 100. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, and again, this was the line as it exists today, which will go away soon. And this was a pre-existing site set back. Uh, the change. This is the other variance. This is the fallout of the building. So no changes in the proposed building um, are tied into the request of variances. It's just the sequence of mm -hmm. running this all through over the last so, 12 years. So that line disappears. Sorry to interrupt you real quick, Jim. That line disappears on the west there? This will disappear once we record the approved subdivision. But we The planning board approved the removal of this line, so this whole parcel um, would be considered a single lot. With a greater than 150 foot oh, yeah, frontage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess that's what I'm confused of why you're why you're here then for the well, lot width. Um, it's based on this being a redevelopment site where you want to make sure uh, we supply the planning board with a site plan specific. I see. The demolition and the remodeling of this building. So as if that line still exists. Yeah, without having to go through and detail everything else here. Already have a site plan and only show development on one part of that lot. Mm -hmm. you know, we like to look at the whole lot that looks at. So, so it, it was just. Uh, so that's temporary then. It, it will be gone. Basically, but you're saying it'll be, be subdivided later, but in order for them to can move forward. Correct. Right. So they've completed the demolition and now they're at the point where when we get a building permit to start actually doing the renovation. Mm -hmm. so we were in front of the planning board. So why was the front, so we got lot one and then to the right of it's lot two? Yep. yep. So why was that, that's just a parking lot, isn't it? Yep, but we're proposing a one-story professional office building. Okay. Park. So the idea was this would go. And that's not shown out there. They actually had a group wanted, you know, the one-story easy access. So this this building was actually going to have two professional suites, basically, so mm -hmm. two nights. 
so if they do this, but um, you know, this is this property that's been going on for so long without you know any revenue coming in. Uh, it's very important to you know, get this turned over. So well, that building's not shown on lot two. Nope. Then. There's nothing proposed on lot two today. Yeah. But part of um, at the planning board, you're saying you, you may in the future at the planning board level bring yes. that in. And it would be sandwiched. You know, and certainly, you know, part of this, we have a single access here and here. Um, so there's shared access and parking and everything else. Uh, so the site plan for lot one on itself stands alone. There's sufficient parking and access and buildings. Yes. Okay. So and this is a, just a subdivision. There's no change to the building on lot one. For the site plan, there's an addition to put on the bottom for access and provides storage. And every time you do apartments, you must have storage associated with storage. But it doesn't contribute to the back setback then? Yeah, and it'll build. So where's the 30 point, where, Chris, where's the 30.8? It's off the existing plan. Yep. Yep, and you're not doing any proposed additions into that area? No. On anywhere on that west side of the building? That was, that was your question, right? Yes. Jim? Yep. That so no expansion. It's not as a result of a change in the no. building. Right. No, is, right. That's existing. This is almost like pre-existing. So, so once again, you're pinned. You did an interior line subdivision to make lots one and two, just to keep belaboring that point, because you have an existing line that is 50 years old. One could say that an avenue you could go is to, you still have to do a subdivision and move it further to the west to get 150 feet and get 40 feet, so you'd move it 10 feet to the west. This, this is the, uh, the subdivision that we're planning for. Yeah, approved uh, last fall. Yep. So you can see this line is attached, you know, attached to this going away. Yep. So this will be one lot. Yep. Zone, multiple families. Understood. And I just wanted to point that out. That would be a whole nother step. That's going before the town board or? Town board already rezoned it, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so it's now they're at the planning board for the site plan. But specific to this variance, it's unique that they're going to be here and it's going to be temporary in nature if they proceed with this entire plan and it actually happens. But they're stuck with a property line as it is, which is why we're hearing these variances tonight yeah. specific so to the that. process of going through this and trying to figure out the redevelopment and how to do it. And and one last question with the 40 foot setback. That's the existing building that has been there for a uh, couple of decades, yes. and you're not proposing any additions there. So even if you didn't do the interior one, talking about the 150 feet, you would still more likely be here in front of us for the 30.8 for a pre-existing one that never got a variance for the past couple decades. Okay. All right. I think that was good. Clarified it. Fred, any questions? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Phil? No questions. Jim, I didn't want to cut you off. Did you have any other? No, 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 no. I, I had all my questions answered. Okay, thank you. Uh, side table, anything to add? Yes, Paul? Just to make sure when that subdivision eventually goes through, the 30 point some odd feet to the western property line is to that parcel number and won't be when that, when that subdivision is right. the interior lot line goes away, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You don't want that 30. It's right. true to go to the extreme west line, right? Correct. That's right. So somehow you have to verbalize that in your condition. Yep. Well, that's tough to do when we don't know the tax IDs. not fully hear what he said so what's happening is here um, we're doing it to the existing lot line uh, that Chris depicted there on the western boundary um, yeah, so as long as you make it clear that it's for lot one yep then you're fine lot one as it's depicted on can you tell me the date of that plan So it'd be lot one as depicted on the January 3rd, 2023 um, subdivision plan. And they generated uh, 
tax IDs numbers for that parcels, lot one and two? Yes. Oh, even better. And well, no, we can't go off of that because they may carry it over when they expand it over and keep the same tax ID. I've learned that lesson now. Don't use tax IDs as the <laughs> reference markers anymore because the assessors change them. Yeah, you're saying that you refer to it as lot, lot one, one on that map with that date. Yep. You'll notice that in the resub, the county changes the, the verbiage from lot one to they are getting Yep. So yep. There's, no, there's no confusion. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm good. All right. I will go ahead and open up the public hearing, but I am going to specify it out front. We're not the planning board. We're not considering planning board actions tonight, and it is specific to these variances only, the 150 feet versus 149 feet and the 40 feet versus 30.8 feet. But by all means, go ahead and to the podium if you'd like to add anything to, for the public comment. Good evening. Good evening. Linda Smallfuss, 35 Attridge Road. Our property is adjacent to this. Um, when I use the, the pronoun we, I'm referring to my husband, Bill, and myself. We are requesting that this board deny the application of Gizzy Real Estate holding, Holdings for a variance in the interior setback not meeting the 40-foot requirement. The rezoning from GB to MR has affected the market value of our home. Our assessment was reduced by several tens of thousands of dollars due to the Berkeley Place construction project on 4415 and 4423 Buffalo Road. Granting this variance would also further negatively affect the markability of our home. This property, which has been referred to as Lot 1, has several other options. One is moving the 16... Uh, 1160 foot addition which they want to put on the south side or the west side of the building the only way that would alter it for our variances today is if he put it on the west side of the building reducing his variance that has nothing to do with what we're hearing tonight repeat that again so if the addition that they're looking to do on the south of the building towards your house there has nothing to do they're within code to do that it has nothing to do with us tonight we are only looking at the setback to the west so that property line to the west the 30.8 feet that they want to do it where they're supposed to be 40 feet the addition is not going on the west side of the building so that doesn't pertain that addition while it might impact your property and i acknowledge that that's a planning board measure, not a zoning board. So that no relevance tonight. So I'm going to interject and keep you on point of just the variances tonight. So we cannot request that the addition being proposed be on the other side. It can't be. He's not proposing to put it on the west side. So whether he puts Whatever it on the north, south, Whatever we want to say about east, the addition it has nothing, has to, do nothing with tonight. to do with this. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, then that alters a lot what I'm going to <laughs> yeah, say. And Let's I, see. I don't mean to cut you off. Yes, I'm just trying yes, to keep, keep us, us on point. I we're, understand we're that. Clear. Um, I we, understand that. We do that. not have a lot of mm -hmm. um, jurisdiction on any of those. That's planning board. Mm -hmm. Well, I would. Uh, I guess I will continue in saying that Gizzy Real Estate Holdings is not new to the develop. Is not a new developer to the town of Chile and is aware of many of the zoning code requirements. Um, this developer often willingly, willfully chooses not to adhere to the town's and state's enforcement requirements, but submits multiple applications for variances. These requirements by the town promote fire and life safety. So this developer in my opinion, and many others, does not exhibit trustworthy business practices. So again, we are requesting that you deny the application for the setback interior lot line of 30.667 feet variance. 
Uh, I would also like to point out um, another avenue of what our jurisdiction is here is we evaluate the applications, especially area variances, specific to the property, not the property owners, not who they are. Um, same would go as if you were in front of us for an application. Our variances go with the land in perpetuity, so it doesn't matter who the people are. An example would be is if you wanted to put a, pro, uh, a pole barn on your property and you needed a side setback. That side setback for that structure stays with the property forever, not just that it is yourself doing it or myself applying for it and me being a nice guy. It stays with the land forever. And I just want to point that out to everybody is while Gizzy Real Estate is the, the applicant in here and is a developer throughout the town, this is specific to this lot lot number one at 4415 Buffalo Road. And it, whether it's Gizzy Real Estate or Trump Holdings or whoever it is, that goes with the property. Um, and that's what we're evaluating today is just the 150 feet required and the variance request of being 149 feet, which is one foot less for the lot width and the interior lot setback is 30.8 feet as opposed to 40 feet it's required. So. By all means, continue on. I just want to make sure to educate that we're very, um, our jurisdiction is very prescribed of what we're here for. Um, it's specific to the land, um, and that's what we're evaluating. So I think you wanted to make a comment next, ma'am. Yes. I guess I'm somewhat confused, and sir, Mr. Schultz, if you could perhaps show me again, um, because we were not under the understanding that. I'll do it. I'll do it, Chris. You're requesting the um, the interior setback is on the south side of the building, is where they're requesting. No. So um, is, is I can talk loud been, enough. Not been made very clear. Uh, it's on the west, correct, Chris? Oh, I said west. West is the back you, side. You, yes, I understand where the west is. Um, but that's where they're looking to go. So this is lot, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the existing lot line, and this is the western lot. And that's where the 30.8 or 30.9 goes to go above around. 30.8 is coming off of this one, and then 149 feet yeah, is up see. here. This yeah. But it's this one, and the addition they're proposing is off this side. But our variance is only for this. They're compliant with setbacks off of this, so that's why there's okay. no variance. Setback from here to here is required. Is that correct to be 40? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It's 40 from okay. this, yep. So he could put his building this. up to about here. He would be allowed to put his building to about here. Because the current setback of the building is. But currently, the building, I don't know how far it is, but this is 102 feet to here. Um, it's only 36 foot here. That, that's from here to here. Right. I so if we're going here, it's it might be slightly less than 102, but it, it's greater than 40. So that would be about 100 feet. These are the parking spaces. Yes. Okay, because this is where they want to get the addition. Correct. Which is why I'm trying to point out. Getting the addition, which is where I'm not the interior set. No. To change. No. The interior setback we're considering is just this one. And that's because it was, because of this line, and that's the story I was trying to tell is, this, regardless of tr them trying to do anything, they would have been, whatever was even the old doctor's office really could have, should have been coming in here for the variance request for that. So that's fixing what was in the past. But then this line was going away, so then this variance goes away. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just so we're clear, the 30 feet on the west property line is a requirement of the RM district. Right. Parcel previously was a GB. Oh, so it didn't even need the 30. So it didn't need the 30. Correct. And it is 30 feet off the rear property line. Yep. That is required. No, no. It is 30 feet. The rear setback is 30 feet. So the, the code says. The rear setback is south. Probably. Correct. Okay. 
from the south property line, which we consider the rear, that will be 30 feet. That's required in the RM district. Gotcha. But once again, not part of the RM. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Continue. Thank you. <laughs> um, again, Kathleen Netter. Um, I'm at 82 Atchard Road. Um, I'm asking that you deny the request for the zoning variance, the setback on the interior lot, um, because eventually that's going to go away anyway. They own the same land. Um, I'm going to cut down my comments here, um, but the zoning code standards were put in to the code for a very specific reason and should be filed as written. The zoning standards were expected and acted so that all are treated fairly and equally by a buffer and so that everyone can enjoy their property without adversely being negatively impacted. Um, one party should not be favored over another. By allowing a variance here when not needed, um, you will be allowing this developer to continually negatively impact and burden the homeowners and residents of Atchard Road more than they already have. We've already been told by the assessor this development has decreased our property values, our assessment values have been drastically lowered. Um, we feel we have been harmed by that. The variance is, um, again, not needed because it is all part of one parcel. Um, it, it is impacting the neighborhood negatively. Um, we are, and I, I understand that since you've pointed out the change here, but we really feel that, again, I know it's the planning board, but that the addition should be on the west side versus the south side, so it doesn't impact us. I realize you're not ruling on this, um, but we don't feel that allowing special favors um, due to their poor architectural design and plans I'm, I, I'm just, you're, you're going into planning board and architectural okay. advisory and, and. Right, but and, th this is why they're requesting the variance, because of their plans. Um, no, they're requesting it for subdivisions that they've already filed, um, that have been approved and are coming in front of us, not about the buildings and not about. I do understand their, that, but their, the subdivisions are of their own making because the subdivision is actually going away. And it actually already has been voted to go away. They just haven't filed the documents. Right. So in our eyes, it hasn't happened. That's the precarious spot we're in here is it may not happen. I, I've experienced that where they propose subdivisions that never come to fruition. Well, I, I do feel that this is harming the majority of the neighborhood. Um, we're currently not even allowed to put up sufficient fencing so as to block this development. Um, as in a six foot or 12 foot fence. Um, they shouldn't be allowed to further destroy our property values. Um, I do personally believe that these many variance requests, particularly these two tonight, um, are both a punitive and retaliatory measure by the developer to further affect negatively the neighbors of Atchard Road. Um, I won't go into the, the skirting of the line of zoning codes and the midnight activities, but I would ask you and implore you that um, there are many red flags here. Um, we have a history of not seeking permission but asking forgiveness after the fact. Um, I just implore you to do the right, morally and ethically right thing to protect the residents by denying these variances. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing any hands, ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Oh, sure. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Chris, come on up. So this subdivision's already been approved by this lot one and two has been approved by the planning board. We're not with a condition that they get a that they have to get the variances approved. from us for the lot width along Buffalo Road and the lot width on the west property. 
uh, setback. So they're just waiting our approval to, to file it. Right. Yeah. So right. the sequence would be your approval. <coughs> we go through back to planning next month and see site plan approval for lot one. That would allow them to start the renovation and we could file the subdivision map and merge the parcels. parcels. Right. And, and once again, that's speculatory that we're not going to worry about tonight because this lot one could still stay as it stands without an addition with the existing building with the rezoning as paul pointed out we have to address that west setback and with the lot one and lot two subdivision we have to address the lot width so that future plan to the west can ne could never happen but at least we have fixed the um variance or we've considered the variances for lot one for this specific subdivision here is paul that accurate saying? enough chris mm -hmm. what was paul saying about the 30 feet and 40 feet 30 feet so four, with the uh, old zone that it was under general business yeah. they met it because you only needed 30 feet and they had 30.8 and the rm requires 40 feet exactly when town board rezoned it now we have to go based on the multiple family residential code that so that true. that actually by going to rm it actually made the setbacks bigger if it had stayed gb right. and not been rezoned right but you wouldn't be here for that you would be here right. for the lot width but you could have a building that could be no that couldn't be here for that paul oh a lot width requirement under a gb zone oh that's right so yeah so you wouldn't be here at all if we hadn't right. rezoned and it. we'd have a, a vacant building for another 10 years right no, I, we're not here to consider. That was rezoned, and that's somebody else's. It's already been through planning board. I've already been through town board. Yep. For the last stop. For this specific one, yeah. And, and this was due to, um, due to the, the rezone change that had nothing to do with us. Um, we'll do each of these separately, um, but I'll do seeker to... Uh, together and I'll do the decisions individually but I will declare the zoning board as the lead agency and based on the information and evidence present this hearing find this application to be an unlisted action of no significant environmental impact is there a second second a second um, all those in favor saying aye aye, aye. opposed uh, that carried so this will be for 7a the, the interior lot setback um, as it was publicly noticed the 30.667 uh, sounds like surveyor speak to make sure we've got accurate values to make sure we've got a little bit of a buffer on soffit overhangs and things like that. Um, so that's the one we're going to uh, decide on first. I don't have any conditions, so ask for a motion to adopt this application for that one. Um, or sorry, 7A. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Second. Uh, board vote. Jim? Yes. Fred? Yes. Uh, Phil? Yes. I also vote yes. And now moving on to 7B, that's the lot width. So uh, reducing it from 150 feet to 149 feet. So that's a one foot reduction. Um, and that's along Buffalo Road uh, lot width. Ask for a motion to adopt that application. 7B. Motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Board vote. Jim. Yes. Fred? Yes. Phil? Yes. I also vote yes. So these were approved. Um, thank you for working on that one. And um, I guess just keep the planning board and town board apprised, but um, I'll be sure as the chairman to check on it when that or if that subdivision line gets dissolved to make sure that that setback doesn't right. carry over to the west. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, any discussion on the minutes from last month, uh, the April meeting? Ask for a motion to accept and approve the minutes. So moved. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. A second. Uh, all those in favor saying aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, minutes were approved. Uh, next meeting, I just want to point out, next meeting for us is June 25th. But there's an asterisk because if there is a presidential primary, we're going to be moving the meeting. Shouldn't we know that? I would think so, but I couldn't find the answer anywhere on Google's. Um, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Not
Democratic or Republican. Yeah, and I don't think either of them have decided yet. Uh, I have a motion up to adjourn. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned.